So the internet has been nicknamed, you know, the ocean of information. And for very good reasons, obviously. You can learn how to do pretty much anything you want. Though, sadly, the art of distillation has gotten very, very, very little attention on the internet lately. And I think that's uh, for a lot of different reasons. The primary reason being that people think it is so incredibly illegal to make it. And just like driving a car, it's basically the same thing. Uh, driving a car is essentially a free license. The gang, I mean, sorry, the government uh, gives you and tells you that you're okay to, to drive. Distilling is the same thing. Just like driving a car, there is a license to obtain. It's, it's very cheap. And there's a risk. There's a risk of running a still, just like there's a risk of driving a car. You could drive a car the wrong way, you could die. If you run a still the wrong way, well, I, I guess technically you could die. Though it's very hard to, uh, we'll get into that later. The point I'm trying to make is, there's really two main types of alcohol distillation. And that is the alcohol that you want to distill to drink. And then you have the alcohol you want to distill for fuel. Now, I'm that crazy off-grid fuel prepper guy, known as Distiller Dan, because I've been distilling ever since I can pretty much remember, and it is one of my favorite hobbies. Uh, distilling, solar, building off-grid solar power systems, and just in general being off-grid and relying on the government for absolutely anything. Uh, I mean the gang. I mean the government. I mean what? So, you get the point. I really hate the government. So this fits in perfectly with uh, someone being off-grid because, again, uh, I'm taking a corn crop that I normally grow to primarily feed cattle or sell or whatever I'm going to do with it, right? And I'm turning that corn crop into not only fuel, but also all of the waste products, the distiller's grain, the high and rich protein feed, then get fed back to my livestock. Honestly, people shouldn't be able to afford not to do this. I mean, you're talking about a fuel source so cheap, if, again, if done right, you could essentially make this fuel for nothing. If you put the work into it. If you, it's kind of like a solar system. You essentially buy a big solar array, and you set it up, it's a big initial cost, especially going off grid, and then it makes free power. You don't have any more cost as long as it's done right. The sun gives you energy, which in return pays itself off, and essentially you have something that, uh, it's, it's like an investment. So a still can be the same way, especially if you intended down the road, sell your own alcohol fuel. So let's talk about uh, basically some numbers here. This is a 13 gallon reflux still. And it has a three inch, I think it's a 26 inch long column, three inch in diameter. Now this still is going to have a packing of, okay, you can use a lot of different stuff. I chose a high temperature glass marble as my column packing. Essentially this is a reflux still and it's just trying to uh, redistill over and over and over again, refluxing the alcohol vapor into water and back and forth, getting you the highest potential proof out the very top. Of course, you have to have an alleviated condenser or some kind of condenser. Uh, fun fact, this got its nickname the shotgun condenser because I believe the original guy, Leviad, who did this, uh, took a shotgun barrel, 12 gauge or a 10 gauge, and soldered it over a copper tube and put the water ports in on both ends because he wanted something really easy to, you know, move and hide from the revenuers that were always, you know, hunting them down. So, fun fact of the day, uh, leaving condenser, primary reflux chamber, column packed with your choice. Again, if you're trying to do this uh, to drink, you probably want to use some copper, though there's a lot of uh, back and forth in the, the, the distillation community about you know, what your packing consists of, and then you get into recipes and just hang on to your hat because you're in for a ride. But essentially this thing is capable of, again, 13 gallons still. I can do a run in about 45 minutes. It is a PID controlled cooling system and a PID controlled heating system. So I have dual PID controllers. A PID is, is just a fancy word for a simple computer that regulates temperature. Again, I have a cooling one for the top reflux chamber and a heating one for the bottom of my can here. 
it is put in simple terms. Now, this thing is, depending on your wash, of course, you're going to be able to get about two to three gallons of pure alcohol fuel, about 194, 193, 194 proof alcohol per run from this still. Now, if that's not enough for you, obviously, you just want to upgrade your still. Obviously, go with the 55 gallon. They're a little more expensive, but again, it's just like a solar system. You want the power, you got to fork out a little bit of cash. Or, in a still sense, you could essentially just build your own if you know what you're doing. Again, I recommend anyone beginning this hobby, uh, absolutely just buy a small one. This is kind of mediocre, medium size, I would say. You know, get yourself a small little reflux one. You can get a little five gallon and, and you'd be uh, happier as a lark with it for quite a few years. So, if done right, again, you could essentially make this fuel for almost free if you don't count your time that you're going to be uh, putting in to do this especially if you integrate this with, again, like I did, PID controllers and a large solar system that can run a heating element here on the bottom. You can automate it and make it incredibly, incredibly cheap, if not completely free. So the next video I post will essentially be me doing a run from start to finish of this still here. And obviously there's quite a bit more to it that I, I can't get in all one video. Uh, for instance, uh, how to prepare your mash, that's kind of a big deal, and getting your efficiencies, uh, again, as high as you can make it so it's actually you know cheap to do this. And again, easy as well. Um, all of your questions, try to put any kind of detailed question that you have. I'll be able to answer them here in the YouTube comment section. On TikTok, I'm very limited to my, uh, my reply length. So again, I'll be answering all your questions you want to know uh, here on YouTube where I have plenty of room to do that. Um, of course, I'm going to be hosting on TikTok a lot. And uh, again, uh, my full-time job is a soil conservationist. So I run heavy equipment, bulldozer scrapers, and I part-time farm as well. And uh, basically my two hobbies are solar systems and uh, distillation. So again, until... You know, if maybe one day I'm lucky enough to have a lot of subscribers and followers and I can make this my full-time gig, I absolutely will. But until then, you know, I work full-time because I'm just some broke hick from the backwoods and lives in the middle of nowhere, South Texas. So, again, you just got to bear with me for a little bit. I'll be making these as soon as I can and, and posting them up and, and, again, answering all your questions and even making detailed videos about pretty much anything you want to know and, uh, and how to do it all. So, again... In the comments on YouTube is where I'm be answering all those. And uh, again, if you want to help me out, support me. Just hit all the buttons and the subs and the likes and the the sherry things and I don't know whatever you can find out. Just pray, basically just smash them all and, and eventually some good stuff will happen. So yeah, hope to catch you in the next one.